Guess what, everyone? I'm selling off my hi-fi gear. Hello, and welcome to my own devices. Dave's videos feature vintage audio components mixed with modern gear. It's all about finding value and synergy. Go ahead and make your day a whole lot better by giving this video the thumbs up and subscribing. That's right. I'm listing my components on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, and I've actually sold off my Zoo Audio Union speakers, my Meridian DSP 5000 speakers, my Klipsch KG 3.5s, Paradigm Mini monitors, and Polk Audio Monitor 10A speakers. I even sold off two Bryston 4B ST amplifiers. <laughs> Next up for sale are the Kef Q150s, a Marantz 2270, Nakamichi TA3A receiver, and a nice Onkyo Integra turntable. I also have a few vintage components that still need a bit of work before I list them. Why sell, you may ask? Well, a couple of reasons, actually. You know, I recently attended my first audio show, the Florida Audio Expo in Tampa a few weeks ago, and I, I had no idea what to expect aside from what, I'd, from what I'd seen on some YouTube videos in the past. I found the show to be a very interesting and eye-opening experience, and it was kind of fun and surprising to be recognized uh, by people who are familiar with this channel, and I had some really nice conversations. It was incredible. I, now, I came away from the show with a couple of things. One is that I should definitely make a few improvements to my main system. And I also came away from Tampa with a nasty head cold, which I promptly passed on to my wife. Now, to be honest, I'm not selling everything, but I've been parting with these select components in order to fund some future upgrades. Also, as awesome and understanding my wife has been, the surplus gear is spilling over into areas of the house where it really shouldn't be. And You know, just remember, this is just stuff. I don't want to get too attached to it. There are other things that are more important to me, like staying married. As regular viewers of this channel may know, I have a thing for vintage and used audio components, as well as modern stuff. My current best or reference system consists of a Bryston amp, Magnapan MG 1.6 QR speakers, a Lin Sondek LP12 turntable, and an episode subwoofer. For a preamp, over the past couple years, I've been using either a vintage Adcom or a modern Shit Saga Plus. The modern components that are mixed in are a topping DAC, a Singzer Spadiff Bridge, and a Parks Audio Puffin Phono Stage. I estimate there is approximately $5,000 invested into this system, which is actually fairly reasonable considering what I have. I've found a few excellent deals. It's not an insignificant amount of money, and I'm pretty happy with it. It works well, and it provides a high level of sound quality. And the, and the Maggies have been a revelation for me. Wow, they are extraordinary. Although this is probably the best sounding system I have ever owned, I am aware that there are a few weak links that need to be addressed. My Maggies are about 20 years old, but still sound great. And I've been planning to upgrade to, be to better, more rigid stands in the future. And I met someone recently who highly recommended the GR Research crossover upgrades for the 1.6s. Interesting. I really am enamored with the sound of these rather large Maggies. And 
do not wish to, to part with them. Ideally, they should be in a room that's large enough with the dimensions to give them enough space to sound their best. And I've done what I can in here and they do perform admirably in this room environment. And everyone who's been in this 11 foot by 13 foot room with 10 foot ceilings have said that it sounds pretty good. On the analog side, I'm pretty happy with the late 1980s Lynn LP12 turntable. It's not the latest spec, but I've decided I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of costly upgrades. The ITOC arm is highly regarded and the table overall is in excellent shape. In my opinion, the Audio-Technica VM740ML is terrific. The Microline stylus is remarkable and it is the best sounding moving magnet cartridge I have owned. A moving coil cartridge is the obvious upgrade path and I'm wondering where the best value of a moving coil cartridge would be. Now, I'm very pleased with the Parks Audio Puff and Phono preamp. To me, that's a real excellent bang for buck product, and it's a keeper. Another potential area of improvement is my subwoofer situation. I actually acquired this subwoofer a couple of years ago for free in a package deal. It sat unused for a few months until I looked it up online and found a very positive review by none other than Andrew Robinson. Now, Episode is more of a home theater installer brand, but I find it looks and sounds pretty good for its compact size. However, I'm certain I could do a bit better. The Shit Saga Plus preamp only costs $399 and plus the cost of a new old stock vintage RCA tube. I like the remote and the two sets of preamp outputs. It's a quality piece and shit audio gear is really hard to beat value wise. The Bryston 4B ST is a Canadian built beast from around 2001. I actually got an amazingly lucky deal on three of them from a seller and I sold off two and kept this one. They are known for their exceptional build quality and the ability to deliver truckloads of clean power. This model is rated at 250 watts into 8 ohms, and since the Maggies are rated at 4 ohms, this amp can produce up to 400 watts per channel. Yes, I know that is likely way more power than I will ever require, but I, I guess it's nice to know it's available if you need it. And I appreciate it has balanced inputs, as I believe I should be getting into XLR cables for better fidelity. The Singer SU6 has provided me with a sonic revelation recently. I run all of my digital music playback through my 2018 Mac Mini from the USB output into the SU6. This unit takes that noisy, nasty, jittery signal from my computer and really cleans it up nicely. From there, it has a multitude of outputs to send an immaculate digital signal to a DAC or DACs. I have the I2S signal going to the topping DAC and a coaxial signal going to a shit Modi 3 on my desk system. I can really hear a definite improvement, so I'm very happy with it. This topping DAC is a really nice model for around $600. I was so impressed with its sound quality when I reviewed it last year that I bought one. I like that I can connect multiple devices into it with its variety of inputs. I'm currently using the I2S input from the Singer and the optical input from the Puffin. I've also used it to connect a CD player through the coaxial input. How am I going to determine which component to upgrade first? Do I post a question on an online forum or Facebook group, or ask friends, or go see an experienced professional hi-fi dealer? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna start out by asking you, my audience, to make suggestions. So I invite you to leave your comments below. Now, let's try to keep my budget around $3,000 and please keep the conversation civil. And remember, I'm a big, real bang for buck kind of guy. So I'm probably not gonna be open to someone suggesting I spend the entire budget on speaker cables or a power conditioner. I will be following up this video with future ones that document where this quest for better 
High Fidelity Leads Me. Oh, and keep a lookout for my evaluation of the Dynaco kit amp that Flux Condenser built. All I can say is he did a great job, and, but he, Mr. Condenser is currently having an incredible overseas adventure, and when he returns is anyone's guess. Also, please check out my Instagram at myown.devices to keep up with what I'm up to audio-wise. Numerous subscribers have told me that they've been missing a lot of my new videos. One way to avoid that is to hit the bell icon below so, to ensure that you're alerted when a new My Own Devices video is uploaded. Thanks.